four things that can drastically change your welds. Settings, speed, stick out, and stance. There are two main settings for flux core and MIG welding, and that is your wire speed and voltage. Now, I recently picked up a nicer Everlast welder, and it actually tells you that wire speed in inch per minute and the voltage that you're running at. So using that with charts online or the suggested settings, it pretty much does it for you. And even more so with what's called a power set mode in that all you have to do is pick the thickness of material you're at and it chooses it all for you. I'm already gonna take this off the table because let's focus for a majority of you like I was up until recently with machines that don't have the output uh, of wire speed and voltage, but just give you some plain old knobs. So let's get rid of this. Even though these knobs are just general, you know, A through J and one through 10, it's just a general range, they still do control the wire speed and the voltage. So how do you know what to go off of? Well. Almost every machine has suggested settings and those are great starting points and I'd highly suggest to go with those settings with the thickness of material you're going to be running as a base point. Now let's take it even yet another step and say your machine didn't even come with any suggested settings, which I have had a couple machines. <clears throat> Yes, welder. <clears throat> well, you can actually take it uh, and measure your wire speed. It's simply done by pulling the trigger and clocking or uh, timing the amount of wire that comes out. And you'll want to measure how many inches per minute come out, or obviously you can do some math and measure for less time. Obviously you don't want to waste a full minute of wire, right? And then I turn to those charts online to figure out where I should be running with the thickness of material I'm gonna be welding. And let's just say you wanna get right to it and start welding. Well, nothing wrong with that. I did just that by making some extreme changes to those settings um, and you can kind of get a sense of what is going on or what the issues are. So for example, in this first T-joint, I turned the wire speed all the way down and the voltage all the way up. And what happens is there's not enough wire going into the weld and what wire is left is just kind of vaporizing and not even really showing up. And thus, you know, there's no weld even visible. And on the flip side, when you turn the voltage all the way down and the wire speed all the way up, well, you pretty much just get a whole bunch of heaps and balls and there's not enough of that juice to get any penetration for your weld. So two extremes. You obviously wouldn't start out at those extremes unless you really were just playing around with the machine. Now some other examples would be where I actually set the wire speed at the right speed and then I adjusted the voltage for this first weld all the way down and it looks like that it's just kind of a cold weld and there's really not that much going into it. Uh, the middle one, I cranked it up and it actually I cranked it up a little too much and you can see it's a little flatter and just not, you know, not a good weld look. And then even more so, with the correct wire speed, I cranked the voltage all the way up. So you had correct wire speed, voltage all the way up. You know, it was, it was burning the wire way too quickly and it was starting to throw a lot of spatter. And towards the end, it was even starting to burn through. Now back to my T-joint example, on the flip side, I changed it to the correct wire speed and voltage to actually what the machine suggested and was able to throw down a very nice bead. Next up is speed. Now guaranteed none of your machines are going to have suggested speeds on how quickly to move. So this one you do have to start practicing and playing around with the welds. So T-joint example, the first one uh, with on correct settings I pretty much just moved too quickly. And there's not enough wire going into the weld to even create anything or to get any penetration. And continuing down that line, I went really slow. I actually started out right at about the correct speed, and then I just got slower and slower. And the issue is it just starts piling up and you're gonna start burning through. And shown on the horizontal piece, you can see that likewise. The first one is going way too quick. And take note that I, well, that one actually looks similar to the one where my uh, wire speed was correct, but my voltage was too low. 
And then moving over, going way too slow. It's just too big of a weld and you will start burning through if you're just sitting there. You'll know you're going the correct speed when obviously you're not burning through and you've got a nice perfect bead profile. Next up is stick out and this one was actually a really fun experiment. I'd actually don't think I'd ever gotten that far or pulled it that far back. You know, like I said, extreme cases there. I hope no one would be welding that far back. You can tell that the wire just, as soon as it hits, it arcs. It just burns back and starts to ball up. A lot of spatter and just a lot of big hunks of bird crap, pretty much. Now the correct stick out is about three eighths to a half of an inch, which does take practice to be able to maintain throughout your weld. Now if you're too close, the issue you're gonna have is there's a lot more spatter and you have the issue of touching the contact tip to your workpiece and then it just shorts out. You're not creating that arc through your wire, thus not creating a weld. Last on the list is I said stance, but in reality it's angles, it's your posture, it's movement, it's everything else pretty much left in welding. Um, but the main thing to think about is your angle. If you get off angle, then it kind of, it doesn't direct your weld to where you want it to go. It throws a lot of spatter. Um, for this example on the flat piece, you can tell I was pretty close to almost parallel and it threw down a lot of spatter. A lot of that came off when I threw a wire wheel down on it. Now the issue with a fillet weld or a T-joint having your angle off is, well, one of your pieces isn't gonna get the weld needed. Um, as shown, you know, with this guy, you know, the weld was all on the bottom piece and nothing was getting into the top piece. Thus, you're not gonna have a good weld and you'll have a failure on your hands. Now, just to show you the correct angle, what you should have, if it is a flat weld, then you're gonna go straight down at a 90, clock it back 10 to 15 degrees and drag or pull your weld, do not push it. If you are mid welding, you can actually push or pull. And with a T-joint or fillet weld, you're gonna go right in at a 45, pull it back 10 to 15, and then drag. Do a bunch of dry runs. For sure you'll wanna do that if you have a long run that you're doing. And that's because you'll notice that if you're starting over here, well, by the time you get going, by your end of the weld, you're still sitting in the same spot but your arms and your angles are a lot different. So you've got to be able to either think about if it is that long of a run, how you're gonna make that pass and to keep that consistent uh, stick out. And yes, with the correct settings, going the right speed, having the correct stick out and right angles, you can throw down a pretty dang nice looking weld with one of the cheapest welders out there on the market. Not sponsored, but all of these were done with the good old Titanium 125. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.